Another question that was asked came from section 3-4 in the online Larson textbook and it was related to question number 23 in the section exercises. 23 says f of x is equal to secant of x minus pi over 2 on the open interval from 0 to 4 pi. So again to find the points of inflection we're going to need to find the first and the second derivative here. Now this is a little bit of a messy function here so let's see what we get. So we start with uh, secant of x minus pi over 2 and we'll take the first derivative and since the derivative of secant is secant tan uh, we would do a uh, we would do a chain rule here so we would put in the x minus 2 secant x minus pi over 2 sorry times tangent of x minus pi over 2 then multiply that times the derivative of the inside function which is x minus pi over 2 even though the inside function shows up two times here we're not doing it of the inside function of the derivative we're doing it of the inside function of the original function so it's secant x minus pi over 2 we do the derivative of x minus pi over 2 again that's just 1 and so it doesn't change the function here. Now for the second derivative we're going to have to use a product rule. That's going to get a little bit more complicated. We have 1 d2. Recall that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Then it's going to be plus 2 d1. And the derivative of secant again is secant tan. And so that gives us for the second derivative this long drawn out secant x minus pi over 2 times secant squared x minus pi over 2, um, which gives us secant cubed x minus pi over 2, and then plus tan x minus pi over 2 times secant x minus pi over 2 times tan x minus pi over 2, which is going to give us plus secant x minus pi over 2 times tan squared. So once again, we can factor out a secant x minus pi over 2 here, and that would leave us secant square x minus pi over 2 plus tan square x minus pi over 2. And the first thing that comes to mind is do we have an identity here? So when we're talking about Pythagorean identities, I always start with sine square plus cosine square is equal to 1. And since I'm looking for secant and tangent here, well, to get tangent, I'd have to divide by cosine. And so that would give me the identity tan square x plus 1 is equal to secant square x. But that's not quite what I need there. That would give me um, secant square x minus tan square x is equal to 1. But I have secant square x plus tan square x. However, if you go back to look at the uh, factor secant square of x minus pi over 2. Now you can see that that factor will never be negative because secant square is always going to turn out positive. Tan square will always turn out positive or 0 at worst. And so the worst that that can be is 0. Uh, but possibly secant square and tangent will not both be 0 at the same time. Anyway, the only place where this can be um, negative or change sign is when secant of x minus pi over 2 is equal to 0. But furthermore, secant can never be 0 because secant is 1 over cosine and a rational function will be 0 when its numerator is 0. The numerator is always 1, so none of those values will be 0. That is for secant. Tangent can be 0. But the factor secant square x minus 2 plus tan square x minus 2 will never be 0 either. However, we will have in there some vertical asymptotes for sure. Whenever secant of x, whenever cosine of x minus pi over 2 is 0, we'll have, uh, we're going to have some vertical asymptotes. But since secant of x minus pi over 2 is the original function also, when that is uh, undefined, then there is no points at that place to have a point of inflection. So even though concavity changes, there are no points of inflection here. And that's the final answer here.